Hello, lovely humans! Jen Fox here for another edition of Math Mondays. Yay! In a new location! Woo! So much better. Okay, so it's been a while. I hope that you have been well and taking care of yourself. Um, a long time ago, someone asked me to cover electrodynamics, which is the mathematical theory behind electricity. Super cool! Also super involved, and <clears throat> it's been a while for me. So for all of our benefit, I figured it would be helpful to take my book, dun 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 dun, great book, Griffiths, woo, and do a review of key concepts building up to um, electrodynamics. Uh, and I'm obviously, I'm not going to cover everything in the book, um, and I will probably get to a certain point where I'm like, okay, I'm done, this is about as far as I got in my class, so that's fine. Um, but hopefully it gives you a pretty solid foundation. Okay, so what we're going to do today is look at gradient, woo, which is a, I think it's used in other fields, but it pops up all the time in physics. Um, gradient is a way for us to calculate derivatives of multivariable functions. So as you probably know, um, we live in a three-dimensional world. So for example, I can move left and right. That's one direction. And for funsies, let's set up a grid system because drawing pictures, yay! Okay, whoops, that's very big. I don't want it to be that big. So my left and right, I'm gonna call X. I can also move forwards and backwards, which I'm gonna call Y. And I can also move up and down. And the down happens real quick because of gravity. Um, but I have stairs in my place now, so I could go up the stairs and move up in the Z direction. Woo, okay. So, um, uh, derivatives, as a quick reminder, uh, they tell us how uh, a how fast a function varies in a particular direction. So let's look at temperature because it's something that we all deal with and it's very relevant to my life right now. Um, so I recently moved into a place that has three stories and the ground floor gets real cold. The middle floor gets pretty warm and the top, upper floor gets really, really hot. So that means that temperature, the variance of temperature, how temperature changes um, as I move throughout my house really depends on the direction that I'm moving. So as I'm moving around the ground floor, left and right, forwards and backwards, the temperature is mostly the same. But as I move up and down uh, this uh, townhouse that I'm living in, um, the temperature varies a lot in the vertical Z direction. And so um, that means that when we're dealing with multiple uh, dimensions or multiple variables, we need to uh, be able to look at how these functions are changing as a position of, um, as a function of position, basically. And so we get to introduce the cool Greek letter, I want to call it del, someone let me know if I got that totally wrong, um, but the upside down triangle, woohoo! Um, and so this is a symbol um, that we'll define in a second to help us calculate derivatives of multiple variables. Okay, so let's take a look at temperature as a good example and use it to build up a definition of uh, del. Okay, um, so we can use um, a theorem on how to calculate partial derivatives to get a, an equation for how to calculate the change in temperature as a function of position. In other words, how is the temperature changing um, left and right, forwards and backwards, up and down? Well, uh, fortunately other people have done work on this and they have told us that we can use this equation. So, um, uh, whoopsies, sorry, these are supposed to be partials. So the partial derivative of temperature with respect to x as you move in a infinitesimally or very, 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 very tiny amount in the x direction. Um, plus the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to the y direction as you move a tiny bit in the y direction and the partial, of the uh, partial derivative of the temperature with respect to the z direction as you move a little bit in the z direction. Oh, but hey, as our author notes, this looks like a dot product. So let's pull the pieces apart and rewrite them. Um, so we can also rewrite this as um, the partial x, um, let me just make sure I'm getting this right, okay, yeah, x hat, um, and really quickly, x hat is the unit vector in the x direction, um, y hat 
is the unit vector in the y direction. A unit vector just means it has a magnitude of one. Doesn't matter what your units are, the magnitude's always one. Um, and then you have z hat. Um, sometimes you might see i, j, and k hat. Same thing, just different letters. Doo -doo -doo. Um, so we're going to add all the partials up. Um, dy, y hat plus partial of t with respect to z, z hat, boom. And then it's a dot product with um, the unit vectors um, times these uh, infinitesimally small um, uh, scalars. Yeah, they're not vectors. Um, so x, whoops, I got a lazy x there. x hat times dx. Actually, it's usually, it's usually good practice to write your, uh, your, um, thing of interest in this, in this case, it's the scalar dx um, times x hat, like this, um, plus dy y hat plus dz z hat. Okay, cool, I fit it all on one line. I was worried about that. Okay, and so now what we can do is we can say, oh, hey, boom, this is our definition of the gradient of t with the dot product of um, dl. And a quick side note, dl, which is called the infinitesimal displacement vector, really is just this. Um, it equals that. Yeah. So dl equals dx x hat plus dy y hat plus dz z hat. And again, we like to be lazy, so we're gonna just use this to mean that. Um, okay, so basically, uh, we now have a definition for the gradient of t. Uh, where we can define this to be, when you see the three lines, it means define um, the partial of uh, the temperature um, with respect to x in the x direction, um, plus the partial, uh-oh, I ran out of space here. I'll write these a little smaller. I didn't calculate my space. Uh, dot deal. Okay. I'll do a little parentheses. Okay. So then uh, partial of t with respect to y in the y direction um, plus partial of t with respect to z in the z direction. Ding! Okay, so this is the definition of the gradient of t. I'm a little funky, but that's okay. Okay, cool. So this is actually a vector. Woo! Vector! Yeah! We like vectors because they have a magnitude and a direction. Ding! Okay, so basically what that means is that this has a size and a direction. So just like when we give um, well, directions how to go to a place, we say you go 35 feet north or something like that. Um, the direction of the gradient tells us um, it points in the direction of maximum increase of T. So basically... Um, it tells us the direction where, where the temperature is increasing the most. And so if we were to do it on the temperature distribution of my house, it should point in uh, the Z direction. Um, and then the magnitude um, of our, uh, of our um, gradient of T uh, tells us the, the slope or the rate of increase along the maximal direction. Um, and so uh, basically this would tell you how fast the temperature is changing as you go from the ground floor to the upper floor. Um, you also could think about it like if you're climbing a mountain and you're standing here, um, then, um, let me give it a little eyes. Yay, we're happy we're on a mountain, woo! Um, so uh, the, <laughs> the direction, of our um, displacement vector, if we were over here, if we were here, then it would point this way because this is uh, less steep, and the magnitude would tell us how fast uh, that slope is changing. Okay, cool. So very important. Um, gradient of the gradient is a vector that has a direction that points in uh, the maximum increase of that function and a slope, which tells us the rate of increase of along the maximal direction. That's really important. 
Okay, so now that we have our definition, go ahead and write that down or store it in your brainsies. Um, and uh, I am going to give, we're going to do an actual example. Um, yeah, again, if I had more chalkboards, this is where I'd be like, oh, we're going to save this on the other chalkboard one day, one day. Okay, so um, we're going to do an example with the temperature distribution in my house. So let's just pretend. I'm going to throw out something that might be reasonable. Let's pretend that you um, can write an equation to represent the temperature distribution in my house. Um, actually, let's do 2y. Um, maybe because the heater is on one side and as I move farther away, it gets uh, warmer or colder. So it depends a little bit on the y direction, not a ton in the x direction. Um, and then, and again, this is very, very rough and hand wavy, uh, but to give you a sense. And then let's say um, that we get z squared. Um, so basically you could look at this and say, uh, well, it seems like uh, the temperature in the z direction is changing a lot. So maybe in the z direction, it looks like this. In the x direction, um, it looks like this. And then the y direction, whoa, that's, that's not what I deserve. And like that. And then, well, yeah, OK, it's kind of hard to draw. So let's do separate axes. Um, uh, so this is going to be x, this is going to be t, so an x it might look like that. Um, technically, I probably should do a flat line. Um, actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's see what happens if you do a flat line. So in this case, let's say that it's 5. Um, and then in the y, we're going to say that it changes a little bit, temperature in the y. Um, and then in the z direction, it changes a lot, because it really does. Um, okay, that's way easier for me to draw. Okay, so that seems kind of reasonable, actually. Okay, so now how do we calculate um, the gradient of temperature? Well, we just need each of these pieces. So the first thing to do is, okay, well, what's the partial of t with respect to x? Well, x is a constant, so boom, that one's easy, that's zero. Um, so, and then what's the partial with respect to y? Well, uh, two times y, that's just gonna give me uh, two. And then lastly, what is the partial with respect to z? Um, and that's going to give me 2z. And so now I can say, okay, well, my uh, gradient of temperature, nothing in the x direction makes sense. That tells us, doesn't matter how we move in the x direction, the temperature is always going to feel the same. It's kind of actually my experience, so that's kind of cool. Um, so, and then we have uh, 2y, so it'll change a little bit in the y direction, but not a ton. Um, and the other, the thing that's interesting about this too is that it um, doesn't really tell you, well, okay, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, but then the really interesting thing is this, so 2z um, z hat. So this tells me that um, as I change in the z direction, um, the uh, temperature changes um, by 2z. Okay, so I'm kind of hand-waving that a little bit. Hopefully you get the idea. Um, and what would really be clutch is, is drawing a picture of this. Yeah. Um, kind of hard to draw in three dimensions, but you can use computers for this. Okay, so now my challenge to you, my dear lovely math friends and wizards. Um, what I want you to do is, um, I'm gonna do this in a different color, because I can. Okay, so I want you to find the gradient of the following function, um, f of x equals x squared times y cubed times z to the fourth. So what is the uh, gradient of f of x? And so I want you to do exactly what I did here. So find the partial of f with respect to x, find the partial of f with respect to y, and then find the partial of f with respect to z, and then put them all together in this equation, but you know, replace temperature with f of x. Okay, cool. So now you have a little bit of a challenge. Um, if you want more equations, by all means, just reach out and let me know. And we will continue our series on electrodynamics as I have time. Yay, okay, cool. Happy mathing, my friends, and have a beautiful day. Bye.